this Saturday we're celebrating Father's Day in Taiwan. That's because August 8th, Ba Ba sounds like father in Mandarin. That's right. And in today's show, we have an idea for a free and priceless gift you can give your dad. I'm Natalie So. And I'm Andrew Ryan. Let's check out the stories on our radar. U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services Alex Azar is coming to Taiwan. He is the highest-ranking U.S. official to visit since the two sides cut formal diplomatic ties in 1979. U.S. officials say the visit is meant to, quote, strengthen the U.S.-Taiwan partnership and enhance cooperation to combat the global COVID-19 pandemic. Two corruption scandals rocked the legislature this week. Six sitting and former lawmakers were among those detained in connection with a bribery case involving the Pacific Sogo department store chain. One of the lawmakers is also accused of accepting bribes to help rezone land in a national park. Four cities, Taipei, New Taipei, Taichung, and Tainan, are once again requiring people to wear surgical masks in enclosed spaces. The rules cover schools, hospitals, religious centers, markets, entertainment centers, and public transport. It's been several months since the last confirmed case of domestic transmission, but several foreign nationals have tested positive for COVID-19 after leaving Taiwan. These cases of unclear origin have raised concerns that the pandemic is making a comeback. And under the radar this week, a mission at National Tsinghua University to save Taiwan's native frogs. The frogs, along with other species from around the world, are being bred in a special new frog house that houses some 500 frogs of different species. The project's head, Professor Li Jiawei, says that 14 of Taiwan's 36 native frogs are found nowhere else, and he wants to ensure that they have offspring that can be released into the wild. And now for our words of the week, Andrew, ready to guess? Yes. Be 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 bellwether, belonging, beloved. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So first of all, I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the beloved dads out there. And our special guest this week is a beloved dad named John Hay, um, better known as Heyo Long in Chinese. He's the author of many parenting books. He's a very famous dad and granddad already, and has some insights into what dads want that he'll be sharing on today's show. That's a great word, Nally. Be ready for mine. Yes. All right, here we go. Small word. Bad boy. No. <laughs> Bad boy. <laughs> Baba? Ah. So, Baba, of course, this is how we say father in Chinese. But strangely enough, I also call my dad Baba. Are you serious? When my brother had uh, daughters, they wanted to come up with a name for my dad other than Grandpa. And for some reason, they chose Baba. And so, so he's been called Baba for two generations. Yeah, well, just for this generation, but I actually now call him Baba as well. Oh, okay. Because my nieces do, oh. but I also call him Bob for short. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. Good. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. All right, let's put these on the shelf. All right. It's Father's Day this weekend in Taiwan. Now, it's Sometimes hard to figure out what to get your dad for Father's Day, especially if he already has a lot of ties and wallets, right? That's right. <laughs> so we've enlisted an expert for advice. I spoke to one of Taiwan's most famous and admired dads, the chairman of Dale Carnegie Training, John Hay. He tells us what dads really want for Father's Day. Your parents were the most, most appreciative when you tell them how important role your parents played in your life. Mm. Either in writing a letter, don't just send a card, parent, Father's Day card, just <laughs> write. You have to write it yourself, <laughs> right? Yeah, must be a Handwritten, right? paragraph, mm. not even just the one line, Happy Father's Day. Uh, that won't work. Mm. So. Either writing a letter or if you are self-confident enough, tell them face to face mm. uh, how much you love them and uh, in what incident or example your parents did on you, either at home or at school or at outside, which means a lot to you today. 
So what did you think of his idea, Andrew? I thought it was a great idea. You know, you don't always have to spend money to show your parents that you love That's them. That's true. But I have to say, it's really hard for people to talk to their dads and tell them that they love them. I mean, it's especially if you're a guy. I think we don't you know usually what? talk I about stuff. Make like that. my sons do it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a card and write something nice. Oh, write something really? from your heart. And they do. And they do. But I'm trying to get them to write longer. That's it's really It's usually sweet. one, two, three sentences. That's <laughs> very, a bit very longer. sweet. So yeah. if my dad, if you're watching this, I just want to say thank you so much for being a great role model, for being a man of integrity. I know, you know, my dad is quite conservative. I was kind of a crazy kid growing up. <laughs> so I really appreciate you supporting me through all my endeavors, coming to Taiwan. You know, what a great dad. Happy Father's Day. Uh, now, I want to say too, I watched the interview that you did with uh, John Hay. He's an amazing guy. There is one part of the interview that I found really touching, and that's the part where Nally asked this very poignant question. You're such a famous and beloved figure in Taiwan. You're known for so many things, for one, being a wonderful TV host, a wonderful manager of Dale Thank Carnegie, you. and a wonderful father, grandfather. Which um, achievement makes you the most proud or gives you the most satisfaction? What do you want to be known for? <laughs> I, I, thank you. I really, I'm not that good. If you really want me to pick one, it's being a father. Mm. <laughs> it's much, this is the first time I have to think hard, either in business, in writing, in being a host, uh, being, or, or when I give him a talk in a big, big gathering. But uh, in, in re retrospect, it last maybe 60 years. <laughs> I'm 80 this year. Michelangelo, he, he's got, he left uh, the Pieta and the St. Paintings, Peter's yeah. Basilica or, right. or, the Statue or of David for or example, or... Yu Guangzhong, he is gone lately. He left so many beautiful poems, essays. But one day when I'm gone, I can say I left the uh, Chinese Del Carnegie Treaty or, or books, maybe. But uh, most, most important thing is I left four good people who are God-fearing and loving, people-loving men and women, four of them. But the four of them become all together, 20 of them. <laughs> so gradually, hopefully this can spread around. That's a beautiful way to, to reflect your whole life. You, that, that is, uh, you left something good on earth. As a grandfather and father, he has a lot of great stories to tell. The full interview will be up on YouTube and Facebook tomorrow. This week on Taiwan Explained, why do we need typhoons? Here to tell us more is the newest addition to our Taiwan Insider team, Catherine Wei. Catherine, it's great to have you here. Hi, thanks for having me. Now, I heard that this July was the first July in history that there were no typhoons or even tropical storms that formed in the Northwest Pacific. That is correct. It's kind of a light year that we're having, yeah? It is. Uh, usually by this time of the year, we are well into typhoon season. There have only been two typhoons so far in 2020, a record low since 1998. Now, fewer typhoons seem like good news. After all, they can be very dangerous and cause a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. But you were telling me, Catherine, that um, we actually need typhoons. Yes, because they bring in a lot of rainfall. A tropical storm called Hakupit barely brushed the coastline of Taiwan earlier this week. It didn't make landfall, but it was just what Taiwan needed. It added 2.5 million tons of water to the Shimen Reservoir. Now, there's another good site to typhoons. Let's have a look. Taiwan justly calls itself the Coral Kingdom. That's because the waters off its southern coast are dotted with colorful reefs. But climate change has sent the temperature of seawater in the area rising to about 30 degrees Celsius, sickening and bleaching the corals. Bleaching is happening at a range of spots, from the tourist magnet of Kanding to the small island of Xiaoliuqiu off the southwest coast. Diving coaches say that coral is turning white in shallow and deep waters alike. 
The coaches also said that the range affected by bleaching has grown to be larger than ever before. A temporary solution may be typhoons. Experts say the storms can cool the water temperature and hopefully save the coral. You know, it's interesting. I've never thought of typhoons as being useful. Me neither. <laughs> neither have I. They're always like ferocious. I'm going to get away from them, right? I know. I know. Yeah, we just want to make sure that uh, you know, even though they do have a useful side, we do want to keep the typhoons at a moderate size. Right, just the so. right size so they don't destroy the coral. But they yes. give us some rain. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Catherine, for thank that. You. That was fascinating. And that is our Taiwan Explained for the week. This week on Hashtag Taiwan, I want to talk to you about Chinese poetry. Oh boy, here we go. Let's talk about some stuff I barely know anything about. Anyway, Chinese poetry is a respected art form. For example, one of the poems I learned when I was in school in Taiwan goes like this. What on earth does that mean? It literally translates into Sunlight moves along the mountain range. The yellow river flows into the sea. If you want to find a more beautiful view, then you have to go higher. What's the meaning there? I don't know, something about expanding your horizons and moving upwards either figuratively or literally? This is just one of many Tang Dynasty poems that I had to memorize as a teenager in Taiwan. Can I still cite it from memory? Yes. Does it benefit me now? Not really. Why did I have to memorize it? Because my teacher said so. Why did she make us memorize it? Because Taiwan takes its poetry seriously. Enter Su San Mao. He's an up-and-coming Taiwanese director who creates a lot of music videos and commercials in Taiwan. He inadvertently started a viral trend in Taiwan. Let me explain. Susan Mao made a post on Facebook where he said he could teach anyone to write a poem. How do you do it? Step 1. Write whatever you want. Step 2. End with 像极了爱情. Step 3. You're done. Chinese lesson time, you guys. 像极了爱情 means feels a lot like love. So I guess I underestimated the number of people in Taiwan who want to be poets. Everyone and their mothers started using 像极了爱情 in their social media posts. You had the interior ministry, the finance ministry, the health ministry, the coast guard, police stations, politicians, pop musicians, airlines, bookstores, all getting in on this trend. Nearly everyone in Taiwan is ending their social media posts with 像极了爱情. Driving your car? 像极了爱情. Eating dinner? 像极了爱情. Reading a book? 像极了爱情. Warning people about an upcoming typhoon? 像极了爱情. What is love? have this doctor over here trying to warn people about chronic hives using xiangjilaiqing. Anyway, let me give this a try. Hashtag is the best. Leslie is the best. Xiangjilaiqing. Oh yeah, you bet that feels a lot like love. Huh, look at that. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. This week's brain game is a top 10, which means I have 10 items on my list and I'm gonna ask Natalie and Leslie to tell me what those items are. We have 90 seconds on the clock and the time will begin as soon as I say go. You guys ready? Ready. Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if Leslie's ready. So of course it's Father's Day this weekend. So this is a dad related question. And on my list are what do Taiwanese fathers want in a son-in-law? I haven't said go yet. Uh, we asked kids oh to no. tell us what kids? their fathers want, and this is what they told us. Wait, go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think Natalie went first. Okay, good education. Okay, that's right, good degree. not on my list. Make a lot of money. Wait, you have to buzz in first. Make a lot of money. Okay, good provider. Stop full. Thoughtful. Oh, wow. These are hard. No. Nope. Drive a nice car. Nope. <laughs> Fill your piety. Yes. Ooh, your piety. Own his own company. <laughs> no, that goes in with good provider. Oh, okay. Intelligent, smart. Intelligent or smart. No. Yours a good education. What, what, what would I want? She's been in this going to be a I good can't. dad. They're going to be a good dad. Oof. No, no, that, that, that would go in yours. Oh. <laughs> a good cook. No, these are all great. I what like these. How is this not um, one? Go for wait, super simple. You gotta for, go for a kid. Super, good looking. Good looking, no, that's too simple. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie. 
wants to be president? No. <laughs> Things about the person, like adjectives. Do you break the buzzer? Tall. No. Humorous. Humor, no. <laughs> nice? Nice, kind, yes. Did I say that? Thoughtful? I said, like, I no, I said thoughtful. Well, no, that, these are hard. Uh, okay. keep going. Uh, come on, keep going. Um, other good traits. Uh, what am I? What am I? I'm funny. I'm no, no. serious. I'm funny. Uh, you said that? No. Um, fast thinker. No. No. Good to talk to. Easy to talk to. Uh, even tempered. I'll give you that. Okay. <laughs> even tempered. Helps with housework. No. Uh, responsible. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> that counts, uh, right? Responsible? What else am I? Oh, man, um, this is rough. Yeah, okay. seconds. Here is, are the other things that we have on our list. We have honest. Honest. Yes, That's we a good have one. Grounded. grounded. Okay. How old were these kids? They're adults. Oh, okay. Yeah. These are kids. Like a... um, no, I mean, they're children, right? Okay, okay. Okay, so no bad habits, so they don't gamble uh, and they don't no abuse addictions. substances. Yeah. Yep. Leslie, you look like you're insane. These are all there. things I'm not. You see, like, how I, I, this was against me. This was stacked against me from minute He's one. He's taking it very personally right now. Don't take it personally, really. <laughs> that, that was good in that position. <laughs> we, we, I will have to say, we didn't ask anybody that is related to Leslie, like, no potential future spouses. Like, okay, you're, you're okay. Um, what else do we have on here? We have, they make their spouse a priority. Oh, oh that's sure. a nice one. And the last one, this is great. My child must like the person. Just it, I want your, I want our okay. right? Oh, yeah. all right. That's, I think that's Leslie sweet. can keep all that in that's mind. Super, that's super, <laughs> like, it's just a list of like things I need to do and it's just not looking too good. Can I ask you, is there any one particular trait that you're most worried about as a somebody's future son-in-law? Mm, oh man, what a start. You know, take your pick. <laughs> I'm, I'm impatient sometimes. I... Oh, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I, I'm going to stop you right there because I don't want to, you to sell yourself uh, short. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me put this one. Guy. I make my work a priority. <laughs> okay. Radio Taiwan International is number one always. Hashtag. And I hope our bosses are watching this show right now. All right. He sealed the deal. You can marry uh, You can marry Taiwan Insider. <laughs> going to marry this building? <laughs> I have to ask Natalie, too. You also have a dad. You're also married. Um, did your husband stack up to the yes, father-in-law's expectations? I think expectations? pretty much everything on that list. Did your dad tell you he wanted anything in My particular? mom did. She made a list. Whoa, that's And intense. then when she met my um, my husband, she said he, she, he passed with flying colors. So Wow. Isn't that nice? That is really I nice. I would fold <laughs> under that my kind of My dad, of course, is like, mm, I don't know if he's good enough for you, you know? <laughs> Did your husband know there was a list beforehand? No, no. Okay, because like I would fold under that pressure. That's kind of a deal breaker. But maybe. my mom <laughs> said you have to ask um, my dad before you can marry me. So. Uh, and and your husband did that. Yeah, he did. That is really lovely. Yeah. <laughs> well, we learned so much. I didn't expect to learn so much from a brain game, but there you have it. This is our brain game. This is for this such week. difficult precedent. I don't know how I'm going to live up to this. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Taiwan News Quiz, where I am the master of the quiz, but not master of the news. <laughs> Andrew and Natalie have 60 seconds to answer as many news-related questions as I can say. Are you guys ready? I um, think so. I think so. You yeah. guys always say you're not ready, and 100%. you just end up acing the quiz anyway. <laughs> 60 seconds on the clock, please. Here we go. All right, guys, question number one. Which United States cabinet member is coming to Taiwan? Alex Azar. Very good. When was the last time a cabinet U.S. official visited Taiwan? Six years ago. Six years ago. Ooh. Taiwan's airlines are offering what for Father's Day? Pleasure uh, trips. Pleasure flights. <laughs> pleasure flights. <laughs> and where are they going to fly? They're going to the Philippines and back, or just in the air? Though? Around the island. They're just going to circle around oh, in the air. I thought they are going farther. The outlying islands of Penghu is considering what due to an influx of tourists? Um, mon asking people to pay money to come to Taiwan. Tourism tax, correct. Oh, wow. Taiwan's life expectancy hit a new high. What is that 81? number? 80. 80.7 or 81? 80.9. 80.9, correct. Yeah. Right well, on the money. Round up, it's 81. <laughs> what yes. is projected to happen to Taiwan Taoyuan International Airport for the first time ever? It's losing money. It's going to lose money for the first time yeah. in its history. Oh. And the last question, you guys. Former President Li Denghui passed away last week. What is the one industry in Taiwan he hoped to develop before his retirement? Wagyu beef. Wagyu beef. Uh, the same kind of beef. Domestic yeah. Wagyu beef. Yeah. That's right. Now, as you heard, former President Li Denghui passed away last week, shortly after we recorded our show. He was 97 years old. 
He's stayed out of the public's eye in recent years just so he could retire in peace. But in keeping with this week's theme of Father's Day, we can't forget that he was the father of Taiwan's democracy. We have a video for you now to recap his remarkable political career. Let's take a look. The year is 1978. The late Li Denghui is mayor of Taipei City. He sits down with Taiwan's cabinet to discuss preparations for an impending typhoon. Three years later, he becomes chairman of the Taiwan provincial government. This is just the beginning to what would become a remarkable political career. Impressed with his leadership, then President Jiang Jingguo selects Li as his vice president in 1984. Four years later, Jiang passes away suddenly, leaving the leadership position to Li. As president, Li Denghui promises to act and serve patriotically. In 1990, students take to the streets in the Wild Lily student movement. Li meets with the student leaders to hear their ideas and come to a peaceful resolution. He agrees to implement democratic elections in Taiwan. In 1995, Li visits his alma mater, Cornell University, and gives a speech in his capacity as president. The following year, Taiwanese people vote for Li in the nation's first democratic presidential elections. Fast forward to 2000. Li's party, the Kuomintang, loses the presidential election. He steps down as party chair and leaves office at the end of his term, having served for 12 years. In 2001, Li Denghui founds the Taiwan Solidarity Union, a political party that advocates for Taiwan independence. He is subsequently expelled from the Kuomintang. In 2004, Li joins President Chen Sui-bian in protesting against Chinese aggression, giving a boost to Chen's campaign for re-election. Even in his later years, Li never slows to a halt. After his political career simmers down, he uses his background in agricultural economics in a bid to develop Taiwan's domestic Wagyu beef industry. He also turns to nonprofit work, helping raise awareness for a variety of different charities. Li's passing at the age of 97 on July 30th, 2020, marks an end to an era. But his contributions to Taiwan's democratic development will forever be ingrained in Taiwan's history. All right, in the spirit of our show this week, what do dads want? Leslie, best Father's Day gift this year. Andrew, you said it yourself. It's hard for us to do it, but... I'm going to try really hard to tell my dad I love him this year. Oh, oh that's, that's good. wonderful. That's I was thinking something like that, writing a nice long letter, a big hug and a kiss. Very nice. I would like a private plane that can fly my whole family <laughs> so we can be together in ah, this difficult time. That's a great idea. And actually, one of our listeners uh, wrote and left a message, one of our viewers, on our uh, Facebook page. I think we have to share this. I'll show you this. It's a mug that says, these puns are armed and dadly. We definitely got a good laugh out of that <laughs> in the office. That's a great suggestion too. So thank you so much for joining us for Taiwan Insider this week. Be sure to connect with us on social media. Yes, we'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment below. For Taiwan Insider, I'm Natalie So. I'm Leslie Liao. And I'm Andrew Ryan. See you next week.